Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a progress bar update using Flask and Socket.io. So sometimes when you are doing something on the back end, that's going to take some time um, and you have a way of actually checking the progress of this function. Sometimes it's nice to have a progress bar that shows the end user how long they have to wait. That's what I'm going to be teaching you how to do in this tutorial with a simple uh, for loop. We're going to be using the sleep call here uh, from async.io. This has to actually be an async now that I uh, look at this. Uh, now Flask, if you want to follow the tutorial, Flask doesn't actually work with asyncs. So what you're going to have to do is do pip install flask async, like so. I believe that is the correct thing. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, pip install flask async. I don't think the capital matters, but this should work fine. And once you do that, flask will be able to handle async function calls. Uh, but again, this is just for examples here, just for the tutorial. Uh, if you want to follow along, that's what you have to do. So, okay, so I already have a basic setup here. The simple progress, I have a progress bar here, and I have a submit. Now, when I click the submit, hold on, I actually have to run the server. Um, now, you'll see that as I click the submit button, nothing will actually happen since over here in my app.route, the main, the main route, I'm just rendering the template here on the left. So, nothing's happening, right? What we want to happen when we click submit is we want to call this endpoint here, which has our main function that's going to run. And this function is going to emit some progress data of our function, in this case, our, our for loop. And we want this data that it passes to act as the percent value for this progress bar so we can see it increasing. So this is a little foreshadowing, but uh, here I'll get rid of this for the time being actually. So, okay. I'm assuming you already have Socket.io already done and um, ready, I should say. Like, there, if you don't, there are other tutorials out there that show how to set up Flask Socket.io. So please go look at those. Uh, we're gonna. This tutorial is just gonna focus on actually doing a progress bar. Again, you can follow along with the code that I have. If you're not sure, um, it'll just be in the description. So okay. So what we want to do is we have our main form. I gave it an ID for main form. This is uh, just so we can access it later in a script here. Here's our progress bar. Here's our button. Make sure that your button is of type submit so that something can actually happen when you click it. What we want to do here is we want to set up a uh, socket IO instance. And so here I have the CDN for bootstrap, which is the library I'm using for this nice looking CSS. And I'm using the CDN for socket IO. So once you have this in, uh, copied in, make sure it's in the head. I'll put it in the description for you to copy paste. We can go ahead, make a script of type text JavaScript and do something like const socket is equal to IO. And this will make a socket. Now, if we want to actually connect to our site, we'll do socket.connect. And in here, I'll do localhost or HTTP, hold on, HTTP localhost. And then on the port that I am, which is 25565, yours could be different. Now that we have this set up, uh, whenever, the, whenever this actually gets called and we successfully connect to the site, the socket.on connect event will get called. And we want it to run a function. And in this case, we could just do something like console.log. Um, connected. All right. So if we refresh the page real quick, we'll see that in the console it says connected. And it's usually good to put this inside the window.onload. And we're going to have to set that equal to our function. If we just put this here in the window.onload, this will make sure that this gets called once the window actually loads. So again, let's refresh. We can see that it says connected. This is some socket IO messaging that we can ignore for the time being. So it says connected. So now we want to make sure, 
Well, for, we need two things. We need one way of receiving data from the back end, which is the percent of our function completion, and we need a way to actually, once we hit submit, to call this endpoint. And we use this using the JavaScript's, um, JavaScript's fetch function. So let's quickly here make a socket dot on. And in here, it'll be called, let's say, um, update progress. OK? And it's going to have to take in a function which takes in a percent, right? We're going to use this percent to update our value of our progress bar. And we'll just say for now something, do something with percent. In the meantime, what we can do is console.log that we got percent, percent, okay? Now I know nothing will happen, right? We need to actually call progress here. And within progress, we need to make sure that our socket IO will emit to update progress and pass in the relevant percent variable. Let's actually do that here. I did delete it earlier, but that's fine. So how we do that is we do socket IO or whatever your socket connection here is called, whatever your variable here is called. In my case, it's socket IO. We want to emit to update progress. Okay. And what we want to pass in is in this case X. And I'm going to multiply this by 20 since I'm only doing this five times. I'll do x times 20, so it'll be 20%, 40%, 60, 80, and 100%. And then we'll sleep for two seconds just to show, just so that the progress bar doesn't immediately go to 100, right? We want to just sleep for two seconds to show it, okay? And then we'll return a response of nothing, basically. All right. So how do we actually call this progress here? So what we want to do is we want to capture this form. And we want to stop it from doing its usual of when I click this button, it's going to automatically go and return the render template. We want, we want to prevent that, and we want it to first fetch this endpoint right here, which is slash progress. So we can do that. Over here, if we do something like let main form equal to document, we're going to access this by the document dot get element by ID. I'm going to say main form main form and main form dot on submit or on submit there we go now this is the function that gets called whenever we actually hit a button with a type submit inside a form so if we set this equal to our own function and this function takes in an event being the event that we click the button And we're going to have to prevent the default behavior. And so we do that by event.preventDefault. And in here, we can now call it JavaScript fetch. So whenever you call event prevent default, it's going to say, OK, I'm not going to do the usual, like render, um, send a post to the route and render template, whatever. Um, gonna let, I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do after this line. So we're gonna, what we want to do is we want to fetch. And where we want to fetch, is called progress, right? Slash progress, this right here. And with what kind of a method? It takes, uh, let's do method is of type post, just like that. Um, I'm doing something wrong over here, and I think it's, I think I'm doing the, there we go, yeah, there we go. So a little bit of a syntax error. All right, so now that we specified our method of post, we need to actually make sure that our app route has the proper method as well. So if we do method, put in post here, kind of forgot to do that. So it should work now. Oh, it's methods, right. All right, so let me refresh the page real quickly. Okay, so now if we click submit, well, we'll see. Ah, it needs. I need to put an await here. But we can see actually here is that we got the percent of 20, 40, 60, 80. Uh, my, my bad here. On I, I need to do await sleep because this is an asynchronous function. So let me refresh the page one more time and let's call this and we'll see after two seconds we'll get the next percent update. So what's happening here is 
we're calling this fetch, right? We're fetching slash progress, and we're doing it so we iterate, and each iteration we're emitting to update progress, which we defined over here. We're passing it this value of percent, which is right here, and we're console.logging it, okay? When it's done, we'll return this response. You can return whatever you want. Most likely, you have a file to send, maybe. So you'll run your function that does the hard work to get a file or to search something up and then return the results. So OK, so now we actually need to use this percent to update the progress bar. So let's go do that. So we can do that by accessing this progress bar. Now this progress bar has is this class right here. I'm going to give it an ID. of prog progress bar like so and we can do on the window unload we can just quickly define it here for a let the progress bar equal to document dot get element by ID progress bar I'm just gonna make sure that I spell that correctly progress bar progress bar looks fine okay now here what we're going to do is progress bar dot style dot width. This is how you change the actual value. You're going to see it's going to look something like progress. Progress. So you're going to see it's going to look something like this. And you change its, you change how much blue or how, how much it's there by changing the width. So we're going to do progress bar dot style dot width. And we're going to equal that to percent, what we passed in, plus percent, like this, so that we're making the width equal to 20% of the container, or 40% of the container, or whatever it is. So if we refresh, or actually we have to save first, and if we refresh, and we click Submit, you'll see that it does it. And every two seconds, it updates. However, there's a problem, and that is, let's say I'm on another tab here, and let me refresh. So if I click Submit, you'll see that on both tabs, the same progress is being shown, which is obviously not good because every user, depending on what they're doing, right, most likely what you want is that for every user, the progress is different since they're each requesting something different, right? Uh, so one way that you can fix this really easily, actually, is by using each user's socket IO connection. Now each user's connection is going to have a different ID. And what's convenient about the emit function is that we can send this data and we can call this update progress here. We can specify to who we want to emit this to. In this case we just wanted to emit this to the user who called it. So how can we do that? So the first thing is we need to actually do a let, let's say socket ID, we'll keep it undefined for now. Whenever we connect, whenever this gets called, we want to set socket ID equal to socket dot ID. Okay? Now, how do we pass this socket ID in a way where we'll know who's calling what, right? So we know that we're calling this endpoint progress. So what Flask allows us to do is actually to pass in variable information into the route. So what we could do here is do slash progress slash socket ID and now our progress will have to take in a variable called socket ID so that it can reference it in the URL. And now all we have to do is when we're fetching we just have to do slash progress slash socket ID. The socket ID that we hopefully should have gotten. So we could actually just check this real quick by doing a console.log to make sure that we're getting the we're setting the socket ID. We'll say socket or let's just do ID is a socket ID like that. Okay? So if we refresh the page, we should see connected and here's our ID. It's uh MCWUR whatever whatever. And if we go here and refresh and hit F12 we'll see this ID is P, what is this, L1, V, Y, etc. Okay? So now what's going to happen is, or now what we need to do actually, is use this socket ID to emit to a specific room. Now each user 
or each tab has its own room, its own unique room. We access this room by its socket ID. So what we could do here is use the to parameter and we'll pass in the socket ID here. Now if we look at the emit function and look at this parameter, where is it? Parameter 2. Send a message to all the users in the given room, right? And so if we pass in the socket ID, which is unique to every tab, we'll make sure that we send it to just that one user. So if we refresh, we see we got this ID. If I click submit, it works. But if I come here, we can see it doesn't work. And I can do this here as well, submit, and they have their separate progresses. So what you probably want to do is make sure that your progress bar doesn't stay at 100%. Like if you see here, it's going to go to 80, then 100, and we don't actually tell it to reset. So one thing that you can do, this is just a little extra I'm going to do for the tutorial, is a dot then. It's going to take in a response from the fetch, but we don't necessarily have to use it. And we're going to do our, little, our, own, our own little function here using response, even though we're not using it. Uh, we're going to set a timeout, which just basically means that you can call a function after a certain time. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to get the progress bars width and set it equal to make sure it's, I, th I, th I think it, yeah, make sure it's 0%. And then in here, you're going to have to specify, let's say, like a second. Now, notice notice how we get 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. And then after that, we're going to return something here. And you can see that it says fetch, failed, loading, post. And here's, the, here's our main link, slash progress, slash I8WQ, whatever. And if we look, that's exactly what our ID is, I8WQ. So this is how you can tell that your function is working uh, or how this fetch is working proper, uh, properly. Now, I, did I mess something up? It doesn't seem like it's going back to zero. Um, maybe, did I not refresh the page when I did that? Maybe I had to refresh the page, actually. That, that might be the issue. Also, let me just put the put the semicolons there now although I don't think it matters now should there we go so after second it goes back down to zero and there you go now if I click submit here or if I click submit here they both work independently of each other nothing matters uh, nothing like uh, they don't affect each other I mean their percentages don't matter to each other and there we go it works like that so make sure that you're using the two parameter okay so that was the tutorial I hope you found it useful uh, and if you did, make sure to leave a like and let me know what you want to see next. Maybe something Flask related. Alright, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.